Welcome to this webinar on test-oriented requirements engineering. My name is Christoph Ebert, and I'm guiding you through this webinar. I'm the Managing Director of Vector Consulting Services, and in this webinar, we will benefit from experiences from numerous projects which we have been doing with clients in order to transfer their classic requirements engineering into a more efficient, test-oriented way of working. The benefit in a nutshell, if you write your requirement as a test case, you have a regression test case from the beginning, you know that your requirement is testable and you save lifecycle effort in a combined value of 20 to 40%. Let us learn how this works. This is a set of three webinars. Part one, which we now have in front of us, is giving the motivation, which is what we call escaping the vicious circle. Part two will look into the methodology. Part three will give case study. And we comprise it, of course, with further information and white paper. Before we go ahead, a few words on Vector and Vector Consulting Services. Vector is a world-leading supplier of solutions in the automotive field, notably market leader in base software with tools like test tools. And we have a service domain where I'm the responsible global manager for the consulting activities, where we focus on four topics, transformation, for instance, agile transformation, a spice, etc. Trust, which is safety, cybersecurity, but also related test methods, supplier audits, etc. Technology, which is how do we get innovation into companies such as Autosar, new architectures, new test methods, modeling, system of system, etc. And training, that is coaching, certification, corporate competence programs, and the things like these kind of webinars and YouTube movies. You can get more information with www.vector.com slash consulting. Let us now look into what are the real challenges which we face today. And the status is that we have a convergence of IT and embedded. What does it mean? Well, I guess all of you are aware that functions are increasingly in the cloud. That means we talk about services. We have new architecture, which are more service oriented. We have seen that for a while already with our smartphones, where the classic telephone had telephonic functions. Then it moved on into services, which could be activated directly by connectivity. And today, most functionality of a smartphone is actually in the cloud. The same, by the way, if you look to vehicles or if you look to medical devices, many implants like pacemakers today have a big part of their software in order of connectivity, diagnostic functions, new user experiences, etc. There are, of course, market leaders which have deployed these kind of methods since a while, notably companies like Tesla in the automotive sector or Apple in the IT sector. What they all have learned is how can we continuously deploy new functionality? And this continuous deployment, of course, means a full new setup which also needs a full new approach towards testing. Those of you who have already started with continuous build and continuous integration know what I talk about. We have to redefine testing because otherwise it will be far too expensive and still not enough. You think about a critical system, for instance, safety critical, where you have to make sure that the functionality would be delivered as planned. You cannot simply say, well, we test every third or every 10th test case, you have to make sure that you test exactly what is necessary. But if you test too much, you need too much time, and you don't achieve continuous upgrades, and at the same time, it's far too expensive. So we need a minimal viable set of test cases in order to have dependable and continuous testing. Now, if we look in the near future, and that started already in 2019, we see a traumatic picture. The issue is that rather than focusing on innovation and digital transformation, we see a very strong cost pressure. In fact, from our customer survey, which we had performed year in 2019, that was pre-corona and COVID-19, we found cost efficiency being ranked as the biggest short-term and long-term challenge. What does it mean? It means 
we really focus on cost reduction, we have to still deliver quality, which means we have a liability issue, while at the same time we struggle with the right competences on board. And this together is fostering this vicious circle because what happens is not having the resources and the competences means that sooner or later we not only sacrifice quality in terms of accumulating technical debt, but also to have less resource available for innovation. And that brings us in a downward spiral. What I try to show in this set of YouTube and webinars is how to utilize test-oriented requirements engineering to reduce the life cycle cost, because test eats most of the life cycle cost, especially in critical systems, and at the same time make sure that you have sufficient focus on delivering the right things. That means focus on value rather than quantity. That means also to escape this vicious circle. A challenge which we have in most critical systems is that we increasingly develop in multi locations, in multi teams, distributed setups and ecosystems. At the same time, complexity is growing very fast. We have more and more engineering disciplines which facilitate the growth of such a product. And that means we have to master this accumulation. And that means we have an increasing need to escape this VUCA challenges, as we call it, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity by an efficient yet effective test methodology. This is what test-oriented requirements engineering, or TORE, is all about. We can approach the business case behind just by looking into requirements engineering. The picture shows a typical project situation. Over time, we realize we have not done our homework in the beginning, and I know many projects. And I've been in this business for over two decades, and I see it again and again. We spend not enough time in the beginning, and later we wonder why cost is continuously increasing. The reasons are very simple. First, we do the wrong things. 50%, half of the requirements are not really attributable to functions where customers pay for. This is an old wisdom. A Japanese expert with name Kano, Kano had evolved this already in the 50s last century and created a model which helps to focus on what creates performance, what creates excitement. Excitement means we have a product or a supplier which makes us say, wow, this is really good. When did you really tell that last time about your suppliers, about your own products? We are too much trapped into linear extensions of our long feature list. In other words, first thing, do the right things. Second thing, test the right things. Test cases are even worse than requirement. We accumulate, we collect test cases without a clear strategy. Coverage, well, in the best case, you have a functional coverage. Some of us use safety standards, which demand certain coverage criteria. But honestly, how do you deal with it in a regression? How do you deal with it in a last minute change? How do you deal with it in a continuous deployment situation? This is exactly what we can learn from the Amazons, Googles, Teslas, Apples of the world, that we need to have a focused regression test strategy. That means also to focus on quality because we detect defects far too late. 80% of the defects which we find in test are actually related towards insufficient requirements. That means that we have a huge amount of defects detected far too late in the life cycle. 43% of the, of the defects in the field, failures for we dearly pay for because of uh, redeliveries, etc., have to do with insufficient requirements engineering. And that means if we look to the cost part, today we spend roughly three to 6% of cost on requirements engineering. If we double this amount, we end up with 20 to 40% savings in the life cycle. In other words, we have a real big cost saving potential by focusing on the right value, by having this minimum viable set of test cases, which we deploy along the life cycle. The resolution to these challenges is what we call test-oriented requirements engineering. 
This is not really an invention, but it's a best practice which we have uh, developed over the past two decades with many customers. What is it? Well, it traces back into a very old HR principle which came around in 2000, which is test-driven development, TDD. What is it? You first write a test case, a unit test case, then you write a code. Traditionally, it was vice versa. The difference we have from the beginning a test case which you can use as a regression test and we know exactly when our code really fulfills its requirements. Now we take this in order to achieve something which we put much earlier, namely that we write a requirement spec in order to make it testable. Vice versa, this is more tangible. Why don't we just write a test case in our doors, in our revision, in our numerous test tool, uh, requirements tools. Start with the test and think by writing the test case already about what is your definition of done. So many projects have not really a good feeling about when is it good enough? What is my definition of done? That means testability of a requirement is a key. And that means also we are much better in managing change because we have a traceability and we have this minimum set of test cases for regression tests. And that again means efficiency because we can accelerate our development as we know that we really focus on what brings the value and how can we most efficiently test. This is the essence of test-oriented requirements engineering. You write the requirement as a test case. And that means, literally speaking, as one of the seven habits of highly successful engineers, begin with test in mind. With this being said, let me conclude on this first part because there are still two more parts to come on, which is we will talk in, part, in part two about the methodology of test-oriented requirements engineering. And part three, we'll look into some cases, some practical experiences. So don't miss those. In the meantime, feel free to utilize our resources, books, YouTube videos, videos webinars, templates, and of course, also our consulting support, which you can find with www.vector.com slash consulting. And that brings me to the end. I thank you for your attention in this part one of test-oriented requirements engineering, and I look forward to present you in part two, the methodology of test-oriented requirements engineering. Thank you very much. And I should also extend my thanks to our numerous customers who over the past two decades not only helped us to coin this method, but of course also benefited in reducing their life cycle cost. Remember these two numbers, 50% of the requirements are not used and more than 50% of the test cases do not actually fit to any test strategy. It's a huge savings potential, which helps you escape the vicious circle of cost pressure, not enough competencies, and insufficient quality, which then fuels that we don't anymore have enough guts to deliver innovations. I wish you a good success with focus on innovation by using test-oriented requirements engineering. Thank you so much. <laughs>